Hi everyone and welcome to this week's module lecture focusing on professional values, specifically service and stewardship. My name is Laura Carter and I will be leading this week's module. As the title shows, we'll be focusing on service and stewardship. First, we'll go over stewardship and we will discuss what the definition is what and what it means to our fields, and then we will do the same with service. Webster's Dictionary defines stewardship as the conducting, supervising, or managing of something, especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Now, after hearing this or reading this definition, you might not fully understand what it means, but the rest of this presentation, we will go into a little bit more detail about this word and how it specifically affects the LIS field. You might be wondering, well, what does stewardship actually mean? I understand, I read and saw Webster's Dictionary, but what's another way I can think about stewardship? I think about stewardship when I think about environmental stewardship, which is the idea of leaving your environment better than when you found it or leaving the planet better than when you found it. Within the library and information science field, I think of stewardship as taking care, supporting, benefiting, preserving, and managing different facilities and different programs and materials related to the library and information science field. So how does stewardship apply to the library and information science field? My examples, and you might have others through the Hearst chapters that you read, or maybe you have a different understanding of stewardship and it makes you think of other things. But my examples that I'll be discussing today are preservation of materials, the managing of collections, the managing of facilities, and supporting LIS education. So preservation of materials, you can think about either the actual physical preservation and conservation of materials, as in fixing the binding off of books or taking care of ripped pages, or you can think of it as the preserving the actual information, such as switching microfilm from acetate film to polyester film to make sure that these materials and these actual like newspaper images, if that's what's on the microfilm, is being preserved. Or it could be taking either acetate or polyester film and having it digitized and making sure it has a digital copy just in case you can no longer take care of the physical materials. It could also be the proper storage of materials through organized boxes, through actual cataloging of it, or it could be that they're in controlled safe rooms, such as temperature of 67 degrees and making sure they're upright or they aren't too close to other materials and they're not rubbing anything or they're laying flat. These are just some ideas of the preservation of actual materials to make sure they have longevity and make sure that you're preserving them for the future. You can also think of preservation in relation to public libraries as becoming the repository of your local community, preserving those materials. For example, Batesburg Leesville, a part of the Lexington County Public Library, their branch keeps genealogy books. So local community groups have genealogy books and they are actually kept in the references section. That way they are properly stored and well taken care of and made sure that they will last for a long period of time and allowing other people to come in and research these local communities and see the importance of their family actually tracked down and have this strong lineage and shown through these books being saved. With managing of collections, you can think about this as collection development or even understanding your community and what they need in their collection. So collection development is, you know, the weeding, the acquisitions, understanding, doing a SWOT analysis of what your community needs and understanding maybe where the gaps are in the current genres you have, or maybe the current areas of nonfiction. Say you reach out into the community and you realize that there is this emerging trend of small businesses in your area. And then you look back and you manage your collection and you review your collection and you realize, oh, wow, there aren't small business books. They're not, you know, startup books. They're not books on how to be a small business leader. Maybe then you understand like you have to develop your collection more 
or it could be the physical managing of the collection, such as organizing, making sure everything is cataloged properly, everything is well taken care of, everything is stored correctly, which goes back into the preservation of it, and making sure everything is accessible for everyone. With the managing of facilities, you can think about it as the physical space, making sure that your space is one, ADA compliant, as well as a comfortable and safe environment for all. Libraries are a safe space, so really understanding how to support your community by making your space feel welcoming for others is very important. Or you can think about it in relation to maybe multiple spaces or digital collections. The library IT at the University of South Carolina, they do seven buildings and seven floors. So those are their physical locations, but they're also in charge of all of the access online. So anytime you're going to the library website, they're also making sure that people can access that. So the facilities can also be physical, but it can also be virtual. So that's another way that they're helping lead and grow the library in the library and information science field is making sure that the facilities are properly managed that way people can actually access the resources. Supporting LIS education can be done through mentoring or joining library associations or even joining communities at your specific library branch or at your university or at your school. It can also mean take taking training courses about new and emerging topics, ideas, and processes, or attending conferences to learn about that, or even teaching future generations LIS important information. Or it could also mean doing Facebook pages or email change, just reaching out and engaging with fellow library and information science professionals to help our field grow and to leave it better for future generations. There are a couple different definitions of service from Webster's Dictionary. As you will see on the slide, one is the act of serving, such as a helpful act. Another is help, use, or benefit, or the contribution to the welfare of others. You might have a different definition of service, or you might agree with this definition of service. Well, how does service apply to our field? To properly serve our communities, we must first understand what they need. We need to meet them where they are instead of telling them to come to us. Understanding what your community needs and actually wants is done through multiple ways by getting out in the community, doing like doing outreach events, maybe doing bookmobiles, maybe having community leaders come in or even understanding your collection and doing collection development and seeing what is actually being checked out and what is not being checked out. This also could be done with a SWOT analysis. Maybe see the emerging trends in your community. Maybe you're seeing a lot of small businesses open up and you realize that you need a bigger, you know, small business collection or maybe business outreach activities. We also need to support our communities by advocating for them, making sure we are representing all individuals in our community and supporting our patrons the way they need and want to be served. Similar to supporting LAS education with stewardship, we need to serve our fellow professionals. This can be done through collaborating on projects, joining associations, helping to facilitate change, or even discussing our own personal experiences. This can be done by joining library associations, mentorship, writing articles about your experiences, initiating this change or this topic, or even making your own way to engage with fellow librarians, whether it being a Facebook group or an Instagram group, or even an email chain, going out there and serving your fellow librarians or information, spe information specialists to help them grow as leaders and as change makers. This presentation discussed stewardship and service and how those two professional values relate to the library and information science field. 
this PowerPoint is just a beginning step of understanding stewardship and service, and my examples might help you, or you might think of your own examples on how you can serve your community and how you could be a leader in your own community. To also help with your own understanding, please read the Hirsch chapters for this week. Thank you for listening to this week's module presentation. And here are the references for this week's module. Have a great week. Bye.